Hi there. We look today in class at literal equations and formulas, and so I've gone ahead and picked three homework problems to demonstrate what we talked about. The first one comes from the numbers one through six section, and we are looking at number four, which says 5x equals negative y plus six. We're going to solve each equation for y, and then with the x equals 1, 2, 3, we're going to find our y for each value of x, meaning we're going to plug each of those numbers in. And I call those plug and chug um, because you put it into the x values and you see what y has been generated at that point. Okay? So for this first part of our instructions, when we are told to solve each equation for y, this means isolate y, get it all by itself on one side of the equal sign. And so when I'm looking at this equation as it currently sits, I notice there's a negative attached to that y and there's a plus 6 attached to that y. And so we're going to get rid of the negative and plus 6 by doing the opposite, the opposite of how they are attached to the y. Um, and for this we do reverse PEMDAS, which is sad map. And we undo the addition or subtraction first. And so in this case, what's being added or subtracted to the y is this plus 6. And so I'm going to go ahead and subtract 6. This 6 minus 6 then becomes 0. And if I do it to one side, I have to maintain equality. I have to be fair. And so if I do it to one side, I also have to subtract 6 from the other. So now we're at 5x minus 6 equals and negative y is what's left over. Okay. And so now at this point, the only thing still stuck to that y is that negative. And this actually is a negative 1. There's an invisible 1 that we don't generally write in front of the y, but it is located there. It's technically negative 1. And when you have a number sitting right next to a letter like that, that means that they're being multiplied. This is negative 1 times y. Which is the second part of our sad map. After you do undo the subtraction addition, you undo the division multiplication. And so since these are being multiplied, the opposite of multiply is divide. And again, we have to divide both sides so we maintain equality. Okay, so on the one side of the equation, I'm left with just y. And on the other side of the equation, I'm left with 5x minus 6 all over negative 1. And I can split the fraction at this point, which is my phrase for saying we're using distributive property to take that denominator and divide it into both terms of my numerator. So we're going to go 5 divided by, because that's what this line means, 5 divided by negative 1, which is negative 5. Don't lose that x, make sure it stays. And then negative 6 divided by negative 1 is positive 6. And so that's my equation. Okay, so we've completed the first part of our directions there. The second part of our directions say find the value of y for each value of x. And so my first value of x here is 1, which means I'm going to take that 1 and I'm going to plug it in to my x's spot. And so this x is going to become 1. So we have negative 5 times 1, which is negative 5, plus 6. And negative 5 plus 6 is 1. And I'm going to repeat this step for x equals 2 and x equals 3. Right? And so we're going to have y equals negative 5, now times 2 plus 6. Negative 5 times 2 is negative 10, plus 6 is negative 4. And then y equals negative 5, now times 3, because that's my third value of x over here, plus 6. Negative 5 times 3 is negative 15, plus 6 is negative 9. Okay. The next section was solving for p, so this is number 7 through 10, I went ahead and picked number 10. Um, for number 10, we are looking to isolate p, get it all by itself, and currently p has a plus 3 attached, a divided by m attached, and so we're going to need to undo both of those. There's a couple of different ways you can solve this problem. Um, the way we chose to do, uh, to solve it, is to split the fraction first. Right, which is a step we've practiced um, for the majority of last week and it's now um, bleeding into this week a little bit to split the fraction. It's just like what we did with the negative one up here in number four where we split that negative one between both terms. We're going to split this m between both terms and so this is going to become p over m 
plus 3 over m. And then I haven't done anything to the right side of the equation, so that's still going to be negative 1. And then it's side map, reverse PEMDAS. We're going to undo the subtraction addition first. And right here, I have a plus 3m that's currently being attached to that m, and so I'm going to undo plus by subtracting. Make sure you do it to both sides. Okay. So at this point, we've now got p over m, which is what remains on the left, and then equals negative 1 minus 3 over m. So at this point, we're looking at p divided by m equals negative 1 minus 3 over m. Well, to undo divided by, we are going to multiply. We're going to multiply both sides by that m. And so then, if we distributed the mn, we'd get negative m, because negative 1 times m is negative m, minus the m's would cancel here, which is 3. And so that would be with the distribution. Okay, the last problem I picked here was um, number 11. What is the width of a rectangle with length 25 inches and area 375 inches squared? Um, we are told to solve the problem and to round to the nearest tenth if necessary, use 3.14 for pi. Number 11, um, we are looking at a rectangle. Right, so you always want to first start with identifying the shape. And then look to see what type of formula are we going to be talking about in this case. Um, and here we've got area, which means I'm going to be utilizing the formula that deals with the area of a rectangle. All of the formulas are located on page 31 of your book. So I'm going to go ahead and write that over here. Page 31. And everyone should have put that at the top of their worksheet before they left today. Um, but just in case, page 31 is where your formulas are located. And when you look on page 31, you find that area of a rectangle is length times width. Okay, and so then it's going to be plugging in. Our area was 375, so that 375 is going to go into the area spot. My length was 25, and then I don't know what my W is. And so at this point, I'm going to now solve for that variable, for that W, and I'm looking, the only thing stuck to the W is the 25. And when a number sits right next to a variable like that, that means multiplication. And so to undo multiplication, we're going to divide. Okay. At which point, we can use our calculators if we need to, but we have W equals and 320, or sorry, 375 divided by 25 is 15, and our units in this case are inches. And there you go.